Today I'm going to talk about the optical power budget. This will help us select connectors for the optical link. Fiber optic links are very different to electrical links. For example, in this little picture of a battery and a lamp, the electrical current flows through the wires into the lamp and back through the battery, so we have a kind of a loop. So we can put a voltmeter onto the, uh, onto the lamp or onto the battery, measure how many volts are, are appearing on the wire. Or we can put an ammeter in the line and measure how much current is going through this. With fiber optics though, we don't have these concepts of uh, voltage and current. If we look at this fiber optic rod below here, we can see there's a laser shooting in from the left. Its beam is traveling through the rod and bouncing back and forth until it comes out the other end. There's no current in this situation. Optical power is measured in dBm, with 0 dBm being the power produced by a 1 milliwatt optical source. Every 3 dB you add, you double the power. And all optical links behave in this way, where we have a transmitter at one end, and we have a receiver at the other end. In the early days of fiber, many different types of products were developed. Lamps, fiber optic Christmas trees, even fiber optic clothing. Nowadays we're really a lot more interested in seeing the applications of fiber in transmitting data. One of the common applications for data is uh, broadcast video. This is where the signal comes in from the uh, HD video camera and then it, it goes down a fiber optic link to the camera control unit and eventually out into our TV set. The, as we discussed before we have a transmitter and we have a receiver important parameter on the transmitter is the optical output power. So just like the lamp that we saw, this optical output is going in one direction. And then that's going to go through a fiber and through a number of connectors and other devices in the optical link. For the moment we'll just put uh, two fibers and one connector. And then over on the uh, right hand side of the drawing here we have a receiver. The important parameter here is the sensitivity. With a typical receiver sensitivity of minus 20 dBm and a typical output power of minus 6 dBm. So with a receiver sensitivity of minus 20 dBm and optical output power of minus 6 dBm, our optical power budget is 14 dB. So this is the maximum amount of loss that we can have in our link and still have a receiver uh, operational. Of course we need to have some kind of a margin to make sure that we're not operating right at the limit of the receiver. And that margin is usually 3 dB. So if we call our link margin minimum and we say that's going to be 3 dB, then we can calculate our link loss and see where our link margin ends up. Now with 10 kilometers of fiber, let's assume that single mode fiber with a loss of 0.3 dB per kilometer. So we have 3 dB of loss in this section here. Then we have a connector here. Now different connectors have different insertion losses, but uh, typical is around 0.3 to 0.5 dB when you're doing these kinds of calculations. You can get a lot better loss uh, when the connector is first plugged in. So for this calculation, to be conservative, we would use a 0.4 dB per connector. So that's a total of 0.4. For the 3 meter of fiber, we won't worry about that because we have 10,000 meters over here. We'll work out our total link loss. 3 dB for the fiber. And then for the connectors, we only have one. It's 0.4 dB. So the total is 3.4 dB of link loss. And our allowable link loss, which was our power budget, is 14 dB. So we can calculate how much extra we have over and above what we actually need. It's 14 minus 3.4, 10.6 dB. Now remember, we were looking for a minimum of 3 dB, and we have 10.6. So this means we have over 10 dB of link margin. This could be used for installing extra connectors, putting in more fiber, or just maintaining this as a safety margin, just in case the connectors get dirty, or there's some degradation in the transmitters or receivers.